So let's try solving the triangles as stated. You're given the following sides and following angles. So let's try solving for the other part. So what I usually do with this is I write the letters. So this one and so all the angles and all the sides. So the given angle is angle A, 37 degrees. The given side is 30 units and 40 units. So since you'll notice, guys, that there is an opposite pair like A and A, I know that I could have the law of sines. So sine of A all over A is equal to sine of B all over B is also equal to sine of C all over C. It so happened that I have here a C, so I can already solve for the angle C. So sine of 37 over 30 is equal to sine of capital C all over 40. So let's use our calculators. Make, make sure that your calculators are in degree mode because you're using degrees. So you should be able to solve for um, C is equal to 53.36 degrees. So I can see that my C here is 53.36 degrees. That means um, in solving for letter B, I can just subtract that from 180. So 180 minus 37 minus 53.36, I should be getting 89.64 degrees. And with that, I can solve for B using the sine law again. So I can say, Sine of A, which is 37 over 30, equals sine of B, which is 89.64 all over B. I can solve for my B. So sine 30 sine of 89.64 divided by sine of 37. So you should be getting... 49.85 here. So the thing is, how many triangles do I have? In here, this is what I call my first triangle. I may have another triangle. So what would be my next triangle? Sorry, I'll make the ones we're solving for yellow. So this is 49.85. Now, the given is 37, 30, and 40. So if originally what I solved for was this, I can see that I could have a supplement of that. Ah, what I saw for was C pala, not B, sorry. I could try solving for the supplement of that. So what's the supplement of one of, of 53.36? So 180 minus 53.36, it gives me 126.64. So let's check if there is a possibility of having another triangle. So when I look at the supplement of my original answer, which is C, let's call this C prime, the supplement. If I solve for C, let's try looking for C prime. And then when I look at the two angles given, is it greater than 180? If it is greater than 180 already, there's some, that means there is no presence of another triangle. However, in this case, you'll notice that the sum is not greater than 180. So what I'll do is I'll subtract the sum of these two from 180, leaving me with 
36 degrees. So that means I can still form another triangle. This is the second triangle formed using the sine law. So this one was for the first triangle. So what's my solution for the second triangle? Okay. Sine of 37 over 30. And then what I'll do is yung C, 126. Sine of 126.64 over C. So let's solve for the new value of C. So sine of 37 divided by 30. Sine of 126.64. The answer is 39.99 or let's just say 40. So here, ah, you're given pala C, sorry, sorry. What I need to solve for is B na lang pala, sorry. So C, kahit na sinolve natin, that means it's correct. It still gave me a C that's 40. But then what I need is B lang. So sine of B, which is 16.36 over B. So let's solve for B. 14.36 Zero four. So that means here, the new angle is, uh, the new side is 14.04. So that means you have two potential triangles for this problem. So the parts are written here. So the first triangle, it has the parts 37, 89.64, and 53.36 as angles. And the sides are 30, 49.85, and 40, correspondingly. Whereas for the second triangle, the sides are 37, and the angles are 37, 16.36, and 126.64. And then the sides are 30, 14, and 40. Let's solve for another one. So here, you have an opposite pair already because you have angle A and side A. So again, what I'll do is I'll write all the given. A, B, and C, and sides A, B, and C. I have angle A as 110, side A as 28, and side B as 15. So what I'll do here is, in here, since you're just given, you know, solve for the triangle, already one triangle, unlike previously, maybe we can have more than one triangle. In here, let's just solve for one. So sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. So let's solve for angle B. So that's going to be 15 times sine of 110 divided by 28. And then, so you'll have here sine of B is 0 0.5034. You can solve for B by getting the arc sine. So shift sign of the answer is 30.2256. So I'll just write up to the two decimal places. 23 degrees. Okay. Now I know that in order for me to get C, it has to be just subtracted from 180. 180 minus 110 and minus the answer, I'll have 39.77 degrees. So now I can already solve for side C because I have the angle C. So sine of A over A, sine of C over C. So C is basically... 28 sine of 39.77 over sine of 110. So let's calculate this. 28 sine of 39.77 divided by sine of 110. So your side C 
is 19.06 units. This is 19.06 units. So this is the answer for the triangle. It's quite easy, right? So another one, let's try solving again. A, B, C, A, B, C. So what I would like to do here is let's try solving if there could exist another triangle. So for this, you're given A is 50 degrees, side A is 50, and side B is 100. Again, so long as you can see there are pairs, meaning there are opposite pairs, you can use the law of sines. Sine 50 over 50. Sine B over 100. Let's try. 100 sine 50 divided by 50. Okay. So you'll notice that you'll end up with sine B as 1.53. And no matter how much you try this one, the inverse sine of 1.53, you know that this, this won't result to anything. Am I correct? This one, meaning there is no triangle formed. Because remember what's the range for sine? For arc sine of x, the domain should be from negative 1 up to positive 1 only, right? the domain, and then the range is from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. So here, that's 1.53. So in this case, since sine of B resulted to 1.53, and we know that the domain for arc sine is from negative 1 up to positive 1 only, and 1.53 is already outside the domain, that means you can't solve for angle B. There won't be any angles formed. So, since there's no angle formed, there will be no triangle formed as well. Okay, so let's go to the next case. In this case, when you notice, let's write the givens. A, B, and C, and small a, small b, small c. So, given angle, 53, and given sides, 3 and 4. So you, you'll be able to notice that there are no pairs, no corresponding pairs. Since there's no opposite pairs, this is not, not sine law, right? So let's try the cosine law. What's the cosine law? For example, I want to solve for c, small c squared. It's a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. So let's try this. We don't know c squared, but we know a squared as uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 3 times 4 cosine of 53 degrees. So let's solve for this. You'd be able to solve. This is 10.5564 as C squared. So C is the square root of the answer. You should be able to solve for 3.24907 or simply 3.25. So now that we have 3.25 in here, there is already an opposite pair, angle C and side C. So here, after the first cosine law, 
you can actually already apply the sine law. So you can say sine of capital C over C and then sine of capital B over B or A over A, it's up to you. So this is sine 53 degrees over 3.25. Sine B over small b is 4. So let's solve for angle B. 4 times sine of 53 divided by 3.25 is 0.98. Inverse sine of that is 79. 0 0.40 degrees. So you're able to solve for 79.40 degrees, meaning I can already solve for A. How? The sum should be equal to 180. So 180 minus the answer, minus 53. The answer here is 47.60 degrees. So this is the answer for the triangle. These are the parts. You understand? So again, not sine law. This is what you call the cosine law being applied. So that means in case number three, if it's side, angle, side, you can never apply the law of sines anymore because there's no opposite pairs. Let's try another one. In this case, again, look at this. It's SAS. So what do we need to solve for side A? So let's write the cosine law for A. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of angle A. So let's just plug in first the values that we have. B is 8 squared. C is 2 squared minus 2 times 8 times 2 cosine of the angle A, which is 88 degrees. So let's solve for this. 8 squared plus 2 squared minus 2 times 8 times 2 times cosine 88. This is 66. 0.883216 as a squared. Therefore, a is 8.1782. Or if I just copy the first two decimal places, that one. All right. So we have all the, let's write the parts on the side. A, B, C and ABC, capital A is given as 88, small b is given as 8, and small c is 2. Now what we're solving for is small a, this is 8.18, and now that you have a pair, an opposite pair, you can use the sine law. So sine of a over a, Sine of B over B, so here, sine of 88 over 8.18 equals sine of B. We don't know what B is, but we know the small b as 8. So we can solve for angle B. The answer is 77.8. 85 degrees. Let's just recheck. 8 divided by 8.18 times sine of 88. Inverse sine of the answer. 77 point, yeah. 77 point 8. Because earlier I did not round off. So let's just use here 77 point 8 instead. Because it's 77 point 7955. Okay. If it's 77.8, let's just write here 77.8 in yellow so that you know that 
what we were solving. So that means the last angle, angle C, can be solved by subtracting from 180. So this one is 14.2 degrees. Okay. All right. So in this case, you'll notice that is case four. You're given all sides. So what we do here is first, let's set up the formula. If I would want to solve for angle C, maybe we can say small c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle C. So I can solve for that angle C, but let's just plug in what we can plug in. This would be 20 squared. A is 12 squared. B is 10 squared minus 2 times 12 times 10 cosine of angle C. So now the unknown is the angle. So let's solve first. 20 squared, 12 squared minus 10 squared, divided by 2. So here, 0 0.65 is equal to negative cosine C. Are you getting the same? I'm getting negative 0 0.65. So you can say cosine C is negative 0 0.65, and then you can solve for C by getting the arc cosine of negative 0 0.65. Therefore, angle C is 130.54 degrees. Were you able to get the same? Okay, so let's label the parts here. This is 130.54. We need A and B. Now, we already have an opposite pair because, again, if we write here, A, B, and C, we don't have the angles. Here, we already have C. And then you're given small a, small b, and small c. 12. This is 10. This is 20. What we were able to solve for is C, that's 130.54 degrees. So you can already use the sine law. No one is stopping us from using the sine law. So um, some of you might ask, is it okay to still apply the cosine law? Yes, of course. But then for me personally, the cosine law it, there's more room for error in here because there's a lot of terms. So it's more prone to mistakes as opposed to the sine law where it's just, you know, multiplication and division. So sine of 130, 0.54, all over 20. Let's try A. Sine of A over 12. So let's solve for angle A. So you can solve for sine of A as 0 0.45 455961. And then getting the inverse sine of that, the answer for A is 27.1267 or 27.13 degrees. So let's just write here. I sorry, that's a twenty-seven point thirteen degrees. I'll erase B. So A is twenty-seven point thirteen. In order to solve for B, just subtract it from one eighty. The answer is twenty-two point thirty-three degrees. So this is the complete answer. All the parts of the triangle are here. Next, here. So again, with this, let's write first the given. 
So there's nothing given in terms of angle, but you know the sides. A is 40, B is 12, C is 44. So it's up to you. If you want to solve for C first, let's solve for C first. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C. And then let's fill this in. 44 squared is 40 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 40 times 12 cosine of C. So let's try calculating those. So I was able to get cosine of C is negative 0 0.2. Therefore, C is basically the inverse cosine of negative 0 0.2. Are you able to get the same? Negative 0 0.2 as well. Therefore, your C is 101.2. 54 degrees, okay? So some of you might ask, why is it that for cosine, there's no appearance of another triangle? Because look at this. Cosine of C gives us either a positive ratio or a negative ratio. If it already gave us a negative ratio, we know that the angle C is already in the second quadrant because cosine, again, the answers are from zero up to pi, right? So in this case, we know that there's already one triangle and that one triangle will, will have an obtuse angle, C. So let's write those angles. So 101.54. Now that you have a pair, C and C, you can already use the law of signs. So if we would want to solve for A, sine of 101.54 over 44. So here you'll get sine of A is 0 0.890724. Therefore, the inverse sine of the answer is 62.96 degrees. So let's write that. 62.96 degrees. So let's just add them to and then subtract from 180. You should be getting 15.50 degrees. And this will be the parts of the triangle. All right, so let's go to the next. <clears throat> the next basically will have the applications. Let's just have this for the cable car. A steep mountain is inclined 74 degrees to the horizontal and rises 3,400 feet above the surrounding plane. So 74 degrees with the horizontal and the rise or the height is 3,400 feet. A cable car is to be installed from a point 800 feet from the base to the top of the mountain. So from here, from the height, the maximum height, there is a certain distance here, which is unknown. And then from the base of the mountain, there is 800 feet. Find the shortest length of the cable needed. So this length. Okay. So for this, let's just redraw this on the other page, on the next page. So you know that there is the base of the mountain in here. And this is 800 feet. So this is 800. You don't know what this is. This is 3,400. And you know that this is. 74. 
what you're being asked to solve for is this, let's just say Z. Let's just label that as letter Y. What you need to solve for is letter Z, the shortest length of the cable. But the thing is, when you look at this uh, Z, if we were, if we will try to redraw the triangle there, we can see that this is Y, this is Z, this is 800, but we don't have any angles. But we can already solve for the angle. If this is 74, what would be the supplement of 74? It's going to be 100, 6 degrees. So that means this is 106. So some of you might say we can already use this. <clears throat> because if we know that, that this is 106 degrees, if we know that this is 106 degrees, the opposite is letter Z. Yes, but then the problem is we don't have that angle yet. So maybe we can look at the right triangle first, the small triangle here. 3,400, this is 74 and X. Maybe we can solve for letter Y first. So since this is a right triangle, because it's perpendicular to the base, I can say I don't need the X. What I need is the Y. So I can say sine of 74 is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 3,400 divided by sine of 74. So if you want, so that's 3,400 divided by sine of 74. Y is 3,537.02 feet. Now that you have this, 3537.02 maybe we can already solve because you know you have one angle in between already remember the cosine law so i can say z squared is equal to 800 squared plus y squared minus 2 800 y cosine of 106, which is the one opposite z. So let's plug in the values that we know. 800. The y is 3537 minus 2. 800. 3537.02 cosine 106. So let's solve. So here I was able to get Z is equal to 3835 point forty one feet. Are you able to get the same, guys? Because there are actually more than one way to solve this. Look, some people might solve Y first. Diba? After solving Y, they would solve for X. It's up to you. Or sometimes some people would solve for X. If another method, I'll just show you another method here. Method number two, if I solve for x first, so I say tangent of 74 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So that means 3,400 divided by tangent of 74 degrees. I'd be able to solve for 974.93 feet. And then what I'll do is this. 
3,400. And then this is 800 plus 974.93. So plus 3,400 squared. And then square root of the answer. So you can use Pythagorean theorem in here. I'll just uh, change this to yellow para you, you, you'll know that there are two values. And then this is Z. So Z squared is equal to 3,400 squared plus 1774. 93 squared. You'll notice that your Z is actually 3835.41 feet, the same as the one on top. The thing is, you know that this is easier. Method two is a lot easier. But why did I not use this immediately? Because the topic that we are at is cosine law. So what I did was after solving for one of the sides that I needed, I had to apply the law of cosines on top to solve for the side that I needed as opposed to just utilizing right triangles because at the bottom, what I did was I just utilized the right triangle and applied the Pythagorean theorem. So there are two methods. Let's call this one method one, the one on the left. Basically, what we did was there is an application of the law of cosines. At all method two, it's basically just right triangles. Now, there's what you call course and bearing, especially in navigation. Sometimes in this one, look at number one. This is read as from the south, 60 degrees to the west, or sometimes it's 60 degrees west of south. So from the south, it goes to the west. Number two, north, 10 degrees to the east, or 10 degrees east of north. Number three, it's north, 50 to the west, or 50 degrees west of north. Lastly, south, 15 east, or 15 degrees east of south here. So those are some of the ways of naming. Also, there's what you call a course. So it's any angle from north. Positive measurement is always clockwise direction. So a pilot flies in a straight path for one hour and 30 minutes. So say the path of the pilot for one hour and 30 minutes. And then she then makes a course correction heading 10 degrees to the right of her original course and flies two hours in the new direction. So that means there was course correction. This was the original path. She flew at a corrected path of 10 degrees. So I'll just use another color. So she flew for two hours in this direction. there's a correction of 10 degrees. If she maintains a constant speed of 625 miles an hour, how far is she from the starting point? So here, what's being asked, guys, is from this point up to that point. Let's say distance y. How do we solve for this? If we are to redraw exaggerated drawing, this is why this angle, if that angle is 10 degrees, I know that this is 170 degrees because it should be one line 180. The thing is, if the speed was 625 miles an hour multiplied by two, how much is this please? 625 times two, the top should be 1,250 miles. At the bottom, one hour and 30 minutes. So 1.5 hours 
times 625 miles an hour, the bottom is 937.5 miles. What you're solving for is letter Y. I can say Y squared is 1250 squared plus 937.5 squared minus 2 times 1250 times 937.5 cosine of 170 degrees. So we can solve for Y. So I'll solve it times The Y is 2179.35 feet. Are you able to follow? Okay. So ito, ha, it's essential that you know how to interpret the problem so that you know how to draw. Because it's essential that you... If you know if you miss out on the angles or the interpretation, the distances, you won't be able to get the final answer correctly. I'll leave this to you.